Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Saturday Showdown brought to you by Marco's Pizza. We have a great semester for you this time around. We got some sports action around Minot State campus, especially the Beaver football getting ready to battle on the gridiron going up against number 20 MSU Mankato today. We got Braden who's on the sports anchor talking about or that's going to be talking about a lot of the action happening around the NSIC, all sports around the area and also some maybe some other Minot local area scores as well. We've got a great show for you today. We're joined by the head coach Mike Aldrich but before we get to that, once again, we just want to give a big shout out and thank you to Marco's Pizza for being our show sponsor today. That being said, let's get rolling, shall we? And the ground game was vastly better last week, but still resulted in a 48-0 loss to a Wayne State. MSU Beavers are now getting ready to take on, again, number 20 MSU Mankato. Coming in to talk about the matchup and give his keys to the game, here's head football coach Mike Aldrich. Coach Aldrich, thank you for joining us today. How are you doing today? You know, what's the feeling like for pregame? Um, I mean, it's, uh, the feeling's good. Uh, we're waiting to, for the 6 o'clock kickoff, so um, there's a lot of uh, anticipation, anxiety. Normally, you get the ball kicked off at 1 o'clock, let's get going, let's play our football game. So um, a little bit of that uh, just wait time that uh, you got to deal with that anxiety. But um, all, all being said, I think our guys are excited for, for the challenge today. Absolutely. And like you said, a challenge indeed. And you guys are coming into this with that ranked opponent, you know, having that uh, ranking on the scoreboard for them. That's a little sweetener, uh, or at least it goes for anyone, really, um, to have that little extra sweetener uh, next to their team name. Uh, in your guys' minds, how should you approach this game if of this magnitude? Um, you know, we don't uh, really look at what their ranking is. Um, Augustana wasn't ranked when we played them, and they are now. Uh, their team didn't change. I mean, they're still the same same football team that they were week one. Um, so we don't look so much as that as much as we're trying to see where do we compare. You know, how do we size up against them? Um, we have talked about the uh, the excitement factor of being able to, to this week play a football team that was in the national championship game in 2019. Um, that that should be by itself enough motivation to to give your best because. Um, you know, they are where we would love to be. And so there's no better way to prove yourself and see where you're at than actually going against them. Yeah, nothing better, like you said, a ranked opponent in Mankato. But word on the street, so things are going to be a little different for this game this time around. But word on the street that the team is banged up a little bit. Uh, starting quarterback Ben Blinsky, Minot native, uh, out with an upper body injury, kind of the collarbone, shoulder area. Uh, can you get us an insight on who steps in or who steps up? And how much does this change your guys' game plan at all, if any? Yeah, um, Ben got hurt early in the game last week, and uh, a lot of our uh, game plan that week was centered around Ben and, and him being able to run with the football and do a lot of those things. Um, so we, we basically limped through the first half to get to, to halftime so we could get ourselves regrouped. Um, we, we found uh, a couple plays that, that ended up being really good for us in the second half. Um, played a little bit more to the strengths of, of Dawson McCleary, who's the, who's the quarterback now. Um, and now we've had a full week to prepare with Dawson as our number one quarterback in the huddle. Uh, we're excited for him. This will be his first college start. He's a, he's a freshman. Um, so the, the great thing about it is, is, is this isn't too big for him. Um, he's very, very calm, very even keel. Um, we're, we're really excited for what he can do. He's got a, a, a phenomenal arm. Uh, when we recruited him, we, th we kind of tabbed him as what we would call a gunslinger, um, very similar to what somebody would describe Brett Favre as, where they believe wholeheartedly in their arm that they can do anything with it. And even if something bad happens, it doesn't affect them one iota. They're just going to keep going because uh, they have that self-confidence and that belief. So we're excited to see now how Dawson does with that being his huddle instead of mm -hmm. you know really inheriting a huddle for a half and trying to get himself caught back up. Oh yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing how he plays. And I think that's a great comparison too, because when I saw him that first game, you know, he was really flinging it out there. So, you know, that's always a good trait to have that arm strength. But uh, besides him, the run game uh, for you guys, it worked very well for you guys last week, over 200 yards rushing, but just couldn't quite punch it into the end zone. Uh, getting that run game going early, um, setting up play action. How do you guys build off of that? Yeah, I think the 
biggest thing with last week is we were down 27 to nothing at half. And so when we came out, we didn't want to chase points, um, a lot of points to chase. And so that was going to cause us to do some things that we uh, weren't ready to do. We hadn't practiced in, in those type of scenarios, uh, the plays that we need to do um, to get ourselves into that because it's a different quarterback. Um, so we wanted to rely on the run game. We, you know, Dawson in his first game threw three interceptions. Um, so we also wanted to take a little bit of that pressure off his shoulders and, and lean heavily on Ali Muhammad uh, and the rest of the running backs. And Aaron Wood and Evan Lovett, those three, it was like a three-headed monster for us. Um, but what we, what we really wanted to do in that second half was can we establish a mentality of, of being able to just lean on people and push and, and go? And we hadn't done that in the first two and a half games, um, but we did find that in the second half, and, and now we're using that to build and build and build to go into this game. You know, you talk about, I want to talk about that running back by committee a little bit, because in that first game, uh, it seemed like you couldn't really get anything going with Ali Muhammad, but, you know, showed some, showed some flashes with the other guys. You know, what, what's, what's the scouting report on, uh, the two other running backs that you guys have, what, what are they all about? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, Ollie is special, and he's kind of our bell cow, uh, and we want to lean on him and, and really um, let him take us to wherever we're going to go. Um, but then when you bring in Aaron Wood, who's the same age as Ollie, he played as a true freshman as well in 2019 before his season was cut short due to an injury. He's kind of our change-up back. He's a, he's a little smaller, a little shiftier. He's got a little burst and a little quickness to him. So it gives a different look than what Ali gives. And then Evan is a, is a true freshman um, from Tucson. Uh, he's a big kid that, uh, I mean, he's, it's very hard for him to get tackled. He just, uh, you think he's going to get tackled just by sometimes the way he runs. And he just doesn't go down. The balance that he has is, is phenomenal. And uh, his care factor is, is huge. He'll do whatever we ask him to do. He's on just about every special team. Um, but he's also an inspirational runner. You know, he's just he's going to go straight downhill and he's going to make things happen. So uh, it's it's three different guys and three different styles, but but all three of them are what we want and what we want to be able to to use to be successful. Absolutely. And since the game that you guys last played, obviously last year was canceled due to COVID. But since that last game, there's been a lot of turnover at a lot of positions, and even of course some of the athletes, you know, getting that extra year of eligibility. I'm hearing a lot with the wide receivers how there's it's kind of a little bit of a youth movement if I'm putting that the correct way. What what's the scouting report for the receivers currently? Yeah, I mean we uh, we graduated after 2019 Levante Bushnell and he was our all-time leading receiver uh, within the program. He he was by far heads and shoulders above the rest of the receiving crew just in the amount of catches, targets, touchdowns, everything. So we knew he had to be replaced. Um, his production had to be replaced. Uh, Peyton Lamore and Corey Kerrigan had, uh, had played quite a bit that year uh, in 2019. So those were our only two returners uh, coming into this season that had any game time experience and, and really any tread on their tires. So um, we've had to rely on them. Neither of them are seniors. Corey's a sophomore and Peyton's a junior. Um, and then the rest of, the rest of our group is, is very young, uh, whether they're first or second year freshmen kind of depends on uh, where they were with the whole COVID year. Um, but all those guys are fighting to, to get into the lineup and fighting to do some things. And um, so it's a very young group from top to bottom. Absolutely. And yeah, there's, there's still a lot of growth be, to be had with all the guys in there, a lot of depth too to build off of. But last time you guys played at home, uh, the start was much better from the first week you know, with a screen pass to Ali Muhammad who went the distance. You know, how do you guys feed off that energy from the home crowd? Yeah, it was it was phenomenal. I mean, the it was a big play on the third play of the game. Got everybody uh, excited. I think uh, you quickly forget uh, as a fan, you, you you're watching scoreboards quite a bit, and so we were able to uh, get the memories of week one out pretty fast. Um, and for us, being a young team, as you said, we the the momentum shifts are pretty enormous for us. So when when we're when we do something well, the the momentums are very high for us, and then. If something bad happens, we get very low. And so we're still fighting to get to the point where, for example, Sioux Falls, when we played them, uh, when Ali scored, I, I looked at their sidelines instead of seeing what our sidelines were doing, and there was no emotion. Um, so it didn't affect them. And, and so for us, we need to be able to expect success, uh, understand how to play with it, um, and how to, to minimize the moment, momentum shift when it mm -hmm. does start to happen. Uh, real quick, Coach, uh, what are your keys to the game tonight? Again, number 20 ranked MSU Mankato. 
and what's the game plan going in? Um, you know, I think one is we, we still, our identity is being able to run the football. Um, we've got to be able to do that to be successful. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're going to be necessarily heavy, heavy run right away. The, the run game might pick up later. Um, the, the one thing about Mankato's defense uh, where they've given up some yards is through the air. And um, that really actually plays well into Dawson's hands because of the, the strength of his arm and uh, his demeanor back there in the pocket. So we're really looking forward to, to seeing what he can do in a lot of those scenarios. Um, but I think if we come out as victors at the end of the game, we're going to have run the ball really well. And uh, our passing statistics will have to have been good be, to, to be able to open that up for us. Yeah, very well. Nicely said. And uh, one last thing for you, Coach, before we head off here. Um, just anything else you want to add? We actually got word that one of our own majors, uh, Philip Green, uh, got an award. Can you just uh, touch on that a little bit? Yeah, Philip was, uh, it was announced yesterday that he um, made the AFCA Good Works team. Uh, so he is one of 22 football players from across the country that makes this team. Um, and a lot of that, I mean, yes, you, you have to be on the team and contribute, but a lot of it has to do with what do you do uh, off the field and how do you contribute to your community and all those type of things. Uh, and Philip is, is phenomenal with everything that he does, uh, whether it's his podcast or um, the work that he does here within the communications department, uh, the school newspaper, any of the volunteer activity that we do. Philip's always the first one to go. Um, and then you add it up, and we were actually talking about it at uh, our pregame meal today. The team was gone. It was just the rest of us coaches sitting there, and Philip was pushing in every chair. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's the type of kid Philip is. Oh, yeah, and he, he's a great leader for our department, too. Well, well, Coach, obviously, you know, thank you, thank you to Phil also for uh, all the contributions you made. And, but uh, that's all we have the time for you today, Coach. Uh, we thank you for coming on, and uh, uh, good luck out there, and go get the win. All right, appreciate that. This has been head coach Mike Aldrich from the football team. Once again, you can catch the Beavers 6 p.m. kickoff tonight at Herb Parker Stadium against 20 ranked MSU Mankato. We're going to take a quick break, but before we get back, coming out of the break, we're going to have Braden with the sports report around the NSIC. Don't go anywhere. You are watching the Saturday Showdown brought to you by Marco's Pizza. Thank you to all of our underwriters. Trinity Health is a comprehensive healthcare system based in Minot, North Dakota. Fiance, with all your prom and bridal needs, located in downtown Minot. KCJB, 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, Beer, sports. KIZZ FM Z94, playing today's hit music. Mix 99.9, .9, Minot's Music Mix. SRT, offering a number of services including phone, TV, internet, and security. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's Classic Hits. KZPR 105.3 FM, Minot's Rock Station. East End, where the poor is worth so much more, located in downtown Minot. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. Nice impressions, no job is too big or too small, located in downtown Minot. MSU Beavers Hockey. Online info at msubeavers.com. Forward communication, connecting professionals in the Midwest. El Azteca, authentic Mexican food on North Broadway near the airport. MSU Theater Department, year-round entertainment. Red and Green, MSU's student-run newspaper. MSU Bookstore, for all your campus needs. Minot Nutrition Addiction, offering healthy smoothies and meal replacements on the go. 
H Bar B Construction for all your oil field needs. Bear's Cat Donuts, located on Broadway across from Monument State Campus. Welcome back from Underwriters and welcome back to the Saturday Showdown. So again, brought to you by Marco's Pizza. We want to give a, thank, a big thanks to them and also to our underwriters who support the Minus State Professional Communication Department each and every day. With that being said, we are going to kick it off to some NSIC scores and standings with Braden standing by. Thanks, Cole. Um, it's a busy day in the NSIC today with seven games going on in three different time slots. We'll get to all that later, but as he said, I am Braden Byers with your NSIC report. We're going to be taking a look at the results from last week, a look at the updated standings, and the schedule for today. Let's kick things off with some results from last week. There weren't too many surprises. MSU Moorhead lost their game against Augustana 43-7. Sioux Falls beat Concordia St. Paul 50-14. Winona State lost a hard-fought battle with then-ranked number 13 Minnesota Duluth 23 to 29, and then ranked number 19 MSU Mankato, won over Bemidji State 45 to 24. Staying on the same topic, Northern State got a big win over Upper Iowa 40 to 22. Wayne State won big over Minot State 48 to nothing, and Mary beat Southwest Minnesota State 45 to 23. Switching gears, here's a look at the standings after last week, starting in the south. In the top three, we have Sioux Falls and number 20 ranked MSU Mankato, both at 2 and 1, with number 22 ranked Augustana standing at the top at 2 and 0. Now looking at the north, Minot State is at the bottom at 0 and 3, Mary, MSU Moorhead, and Concordia St. Paul are all together at 1 and 2. Northern State and Bemidji State are also together at 2 and 1, with number 11 ranked Minnesota Duluth leading the way at 3 and 0. Now as promised, here's a look at today's schedule. We have some results from the early window, which began at noon. M MSU Moorhead beat Northern Iowa 33 to 28, and Southwest Minnesota State beat Concordia St. Paul 34 to 24. Switching to the evening slate, which is in uh, it, the afternoon slate, which is in progress, number 22 Augustana is taking on Bemidji State in Bemidji, Minnesota, and Mary is taking on Winona State in Bismarck. Now to the nightcaps. Northern State is set to host Sioux Falls in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Number 11, Minnesota Duluth, welcomes Wayne State to Duluth, Minnesota. And of course, we can't forget about the Minot State welcoming MSU Mankato into the Magic City. All of those games are set to kick off at 6 p.m. And you can watch Minot versus MSU Mankato on the NSIC Network and Beck Sports. I know it's a little early to be looking ahead, but next week the Beavers are on the road again, taking on the other Beavers in the conference, Bemidji State. Kickoff for that one will be at 2 p.m. next Saturday, October 2nd. This has been Braden Byers with your NSIC report. And Cole, a lot of games happening today. Is there any one you have your eye on in particular? Um, maybe not the ones currently in particular, but I think later on in the schedule when Minot State gets to travel to Bismarck to take on Mary, that will be a huge one. I'm totally looking forward to that, and it should be a great matchup. Always an in-state rivalry. You know, you just, you really cannot go wrong with it. Uh, you, Mary, looking a little more explosive on offense this, this time around, although, you know, still kind of losing some games the way that Minot State is against other teams. You know, the field, field is just really good in the NSIC, and I think uh, it'll be a good test for the Beavers to see, you know, just how well you, Mary, has improved and how much Minot State, you know, last time we saw them, 34-29, I believe, a comeback win for the Beavers, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how they play out. I, I believe that will be going on in early November, if I'm not mistaken. But what, which games are you looking forward to? Well, not really much. Of course, uh, this one, obviously, there's always oh. potential for an upset. Uh, but, of course, um, welcoming a nationally ranked team into town, it's always a, going to be a fun atmosphere. Yes, it is going to be a big challenge, a big test for the Beavers. So we'll see if they can pull off the upset here. But uh, folks, with that being said, again, you are watching the Saturday Showdown brought to you by Marco's Pizza. Want to give them a big shout out today uh, for being able to help and support us uh, today and as well for the semester as well. Hopefully we'll see. But uh, with that, all that, uh, folks, we will be right back. We're going to kick it off to an underwriters. Just real quick, we're 
or real quick before underwriters, we're going to get into some hot topics with me and Braden. Stick around, folks. Welcome back to the Saturday Showdown, brought to you by Marco's Pizza. Of course, we want to give a big thanks to them and our underwriters, again, for supporting the MSU ProCom Department daily. Uh, as promised, we are here with Braden, our anchor for the day. Uh, we're going to be talking some uh, hot topics around Minot Sports and uh, some more NSIC stuff. Uh, Braden, uh, what do you have on mind? Oh, I'm, I'm not really. I'm just uh, kind of letting you take control. I'm new to my not I I mean the first time I was here was honestly like a couple months ago so mm -hmm. I I honestly have no idea about the history of the athletic teams or whatever so hey that's totally fine yeah we're brand new uh, welcome uh, brand new major Braden Byers by the way and uh, Braden you know there's a you know, pretty big story going around uh, the old Minot State head coach or before Mike Aldrich um, he he was kind of uh, let go or I don't want to necessarily say let go, but uh, something happened where he was actually the MSU Mankato coach, um, but something happened, some legal stuff. Um, he got let go of his job, and then Minus State brought him on. Um, but then uh, he got his original job back with Mankato. Kind of some, you know, some fishy stuff happening. Uh, what would you think, or what do you think, what do coaches do in that type of situation? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not really sure uh, not being in that uh, position, but... I, I know, obviously, um, if you've coached at a place and get, like, uh, put on leave or whatever happened, um, definitely you obviously would want your old job back if it gets offered to you. Mm -hmm. um, of course, then I can also see the side of wanting a new opportunity, uh, kind of just starting fresh if something legal would have happened, and maybe even rebuilding a, a, a then-struggling Minot program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and who knows what could have happened, but obviously uh, that's not the case anymore. You know, he's the coach in Mankato, so even uh, getting an upset win today would be huge, you know, just to kind of, you know, sweeten the pot, some revenge type stuff. But uh, um, off of that topic, that's kind of uh, some, le let the legal stuff, uh, let that be. Definitely. But let, let's talk some local sports, some uh, high, school, high school football going on last night. Uh, mine at high in Williston, getting a big shutout win over the Coyotes. Uh, what did you think of the score when you first saw it? Um, I, I kind of expected it, um, not going to lie. I'm, I'm, of course, being from a Class B town, I don't know mm -hmm. much about Class A, but I talked to one of my friends uh, here on campus that went to Williston, and he said they haven't been doing too hot in the past couple mm -hmm. years. So I kind of went in, maybe expected a little bit of a score from Williston, but yeah, and uh, you actually came from Linton High School. How are they doing currently? Um, well, the volleyball team last year went undefeated to win the state championship. They um, still are in the running for the state championship, obviously, but they are not undefeated. They ended up losing to Thompson um, it, over in a Northern Thompson's Cast good. tournament. Yep. So um, I, I do believe I uh, saw a story where one of the seniors 
said that uh, she's kind of glad they lost, get the monkey off their back and kind of humble a little bit and then focus their sights on getting back to the tournament. Yeah, kind of interesting way to put it. Yeah, kind of get a monkey off your back, but for a first loss in forever. But hey, it, it may work. It, it may be a positive for any team, you know, suffering a loss. You know, not everyone enjoys adversity, but the ones that are mentally strong, when they face adversity, that, that usually tends to help them out too. Uh, how's, how's the football team doing, by the way? Uh, the football team is doing okay. They started off uh, 2-0, I do believe, um, jumping to a new division, uh, going from a nine-man to 11-man after winning the state championship as well uh, because of the emergency co-op between Strasburg Zeeland and Linton HMB. But um, I, I feel like they're kind of adjusting well, but they are in a tough region with Oaks and Lisbon. Lisbon coming off, um, coming in second in the state tournament playoffs. So it's, it's, it's going to be a rough road ahead for the Lions if they uh, end up staying in that division or if the co-op breaks mm -hmm. off and they go to their separate ways again, they might go back down to nine man. There, yeah, there you go. And staying in Class B, uh, Bishop Ryan getting a 37-7 win over the Stanley Blue Jays. It was actually homecoming week for them. Uh, you saw the score, obviously. You know, the Lions, they just look very unstoppable on offense, it, even after having to go through all the changes in the positions. You know, they graduated a lot, a lot of skill guys last year. You know, are, are you surprised that they're still this good, even though they kind of haven't been able to get over the hump in the playoffs? I mean, of course, when, when you're... Um Working with the school program, like whether it be college or high school, you, you, you really have to deal with what you're dealt if you're the coaching staff. And so a lot of success reflects back onto the coaching staff and what they can do to develop the players and just to keep a winning culture. Absolutely. And uh, we'll move on to some uh, minus state beavers. You know, uh, we just talked to head coach Mike Aldridge. You know, what, what are some of your keys to the game? You know, three tough losses in a row, 0-3. Uh, one was 49-0, 48-10, and 48-0. You know, what, what, do you, what do you think the team needs to do to get going early, at least build something early? Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure uh, offensively with uh, Ben Belinsky going down with an injury and uh, bringing in a redshirt freshman to uh, – start this game and against a nationally ranked opponent nonetheless. But um, I, I think that a, a good step in the right direction would be just kind of limiting the other team's offense. Maybe not getting, um, not letting them put so many points up in the first half or even like limiting the final score would be a mm -hmm. good place to start. Oh yeah, and just like you, I'm also uh, Denver Broncos fans. We're both Denver Broncos fans, by the way. Uh, we're just getting uh, ready to, for them to watch, or getting ready to watch the New York Jets this Sunday. Uh, so we know we see firsthand what it's like, uh, you know, controlling the ball, or r running the ball, having control possession, you know, playing strong defense. Is that kind of what you're going with with the Beavers here? Just have ball control and def strong defense. You know? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Um, with with me being a Broncos fan, defense is always a huge culture in Denver, especially for the Broncos. So, um, of course, with the Orange Crush defense back in the '70s, and then bringing it back around the 2015 area when they won Super Bowl 50. But uh, defense is always a huge thing for me because, in my eyes, if you can limit the production, if you lose a close game, that's a lot better than losing oh, yeah. a blowout. Oh yeah, in my opinion. Absolutely. Well, Braden, uh, we're just about out of time here, but uh, you did a great job on the sports report today. And uh, we had a great show today. Thank you guys, as always, for uh, tuning in. This, is, this was the first Saturday showdown of the semester. We'll have a, two more broadcasts. This show is brought to you by Marco's Pizza. We thank them for this, their support today. And as always, fans, you know, just be on the lookout. Minot State Football, 6 p.m. against MSU Mankato tonight. Be looking forward to that. We again, we thank head coach Mike Aldrich, Braden with the sports report. I'm Cole Clementich signing off. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. I've been cheering since I was a freshman in high school. I coached for about two years. I was a head coach there. It's always been my life. I really love how involved all my teachers are and they really care. I get a lot of real world experience here. Public relations to me is all about helping an organization, a business, an individual be shed in a positive light. That's what it's all about.
for the KMSU auction, we go around to businesses and we get donations. I got to auction off the packages on live TV. I loved everything about it. I can't tell you how much fun I had. I never knew what I was going to do and I never had any passions. I have a broadcasting degree. I felt I was at home at school and I finally felt I was on the right path and I was actually gonna like what I'm doing and be good at it.